cosmology is a real bastard in a lot of ways. It's made it ever harder, has been making it ever harder for us to think too highly of ourselves. Ever since Galileo deposed us from our very conceited position, the one we'd chosen for ourselves, of course, um, and had pointed out to us by the comforting church at the center of uh, what was thought of as creation. Uh, now it's almost a commonplace because of the the knife edge of climatology on which we understand ourselves to live and when we see the rest of our, just our tiny little suburb of a solar system, an unimportant speck in an unimportant suburb of a, of a little known galaxy, just in our neighborhood, every other planet is either too hot to live in or too cold and lots of our planet is one of those or the other and the rest is on a knife edge as we've increasingly come to understand. And so the probability of our being here forever is nil and the possibility that will last as long as our planet isn't that great but suppose we do here's something to cheer you up I was at a festival in Hay on Wye I don't know if you've ever been there a wonderful town on the English Welsh border where there's now a beautiful annual literary festival a couple of years ago one of the speakers was uh, Sir Martin Rees Sir Martin is the professor of cosmology and astrophysics at Cambridge University and he's also got the wonderful title of the Astronomer Royal, uh, which even a Republican like myself can imagine wanting to have. <laughs> Just as I live in Washington, I've never wanted a political job, but if I was to be given grace and favor by the president, it would be the Bureau of Alcohol, Firearms, and Tobacco. <laughs> anyway, I can't be the Astronomer Royal, but I can quote what Sir Martin said in an extraordinary speech called Dark Materials which was the Joseph Rotblatt Memorial Lecture. And there was a paragraph in it that completely arrested me. And I'm going to, as they say, share it with you. Um, Most educated people, said Sir Martin, are aware that we are the outcome of nearly four billion years of Darwinian selection. But many tend to think that humans are still somehow the culmination of that. Our sun is less than halfway through its lifespan. It will not be humans who watch that sun's demise six billion years from now. Any creatures that then do exist will be as different from us as we are from bacteria or amoeba. I find that an arresting thought, in some ways a depressing one, in some ways an inspiring one. It certainly makes me feel that one uh, mustn't consider evolution Uh, as producing us as its last word, that would be a sort of insult to any scientific process. We happen to know that even in the measurable distance of the last few thousand years, that progress is going forward in our brain formation. I think our job is to remain without illusions, integral, intact, keep our planet that way as best we can, and pass it on so that this experiment gets more interesting. And if you'll allow me to say so, what I just quoted to you from Sir Martin, unless I much mistake my audience, is genuinely awe-inspiring. Really awe-inspiring. You think of creatures gradually watching the sun die, and they're not us. And they're as far from us as bacteria our ancestors are from us. If that isn't mind-expanding, if that isn't awe-inspiring, then you don't have the capacity for awe, and you won't be able to get it from a holy book either. In other words, it's not a matter of whether you laugh or cry. It's a matter of how you think and what you think.